everyone and welcome back to Passion and Purpose. I'm always super excited to interview my guests on PNP and today is no exception. I have with me today a woman who is a classic example of a person who lives a life fueled with passion and purpose. I have been doing a lot of research on her and one thing that so resonates with me is her use of the word passion and in nearly every page of her website and even on LinkedIn. She is a person who is inspiring, who is motivational and who has made such a huge difference to so many lives at a very young age. She is a licensed, certified and in her words, passion driven speech language pathologist with a very strong amazing background in academics and research. She tells me that she chose this very niche and unique field because she is extremely passionate about the A to Zs of speech, language, swallowing sciences. One of her counterparts, um, SLP counterparts and her friend tells me that the unique way she has showcased the difference uh, all this makes to a patient's life is not only a testament to her capability, but the entire profession as well. She has been known to be very courageous and take, take the path less trodden. Straight out of college, she started her own company, PETA SLS Clinic. Today, she is the CEO and founder of this. She is highly regarded in her profession, very successful, but very humble. Her humility is brought, brought out in her mantra, do your 50% with an honest heart and God will do his other 50% with no doubt. Please help me welcome to my show, the very talented, highly energetic, very beautiful, and of course, passionate, Elisa Baby. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. And I'm so happy to have you with me today, Elisa. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And we've been wanting to do this for the longest time. And because of the pandemic, we have not been able to meet. But I'm so glad you're with me today. Yes, yes. It's a mutual feeling. Of yes. And, you know, there was so much to say about you, but I, I wanted you to say a little more about yourself. Anything that I have missed, which you want the audience to know, would be this would be a great time to fill it in. Well, to all the viewers, Kavita has done more than justice to my introduction. Probably something that I never realized about myself, but just the technicalities. So I'm a speech language pathologist. I'm also a dysphagia specialist. So I do all these and I treat people who have communication disorders as well as swallowing disorders. But the rest of the passion, the skills, the talent, I think Kavita has made it very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I'm, I, I will talk later about how, you know, uh, Eliza came into my life. But first, Eliza, you know, reading up about you, you're all of 26. Okay, viewers, she's only 26. And she's done all this. And I feel like somewhere you figured out the why, the how, the when, everything about life. And you are just living a life, you know, which is on a path to greatness. Definitely. You're already doing such good work. But this is just, I feel, the tip of the iceberg for you. So how did you figure all this out? And how supportive uh, were your family when you were doing all this? Well, uh, as often as I say, passion is something that has always driven me. And I've been repeatedly quoting that everywhere. Absolutely. So I have been, you know, probably it's the army background that I've been brought up in. We were always as kids told us, no matter how small a thing you think you're going to do, just do it with all your heart. And the success is going to come running to you. So that's all I do. My family, my father, my mother, they're always telling me, do not compete with anybody, but yourself, rather. Wow. Hmm. So if you are going to do something tomorrow, you should be doing that better than you did it today. That's, I think just, you know, the dice just keeps rolling because of that. So that's how supportive my family has been. So has my husband and uh, the extended family, of course. Wow. 
Wonderful. And for everyone um, who doesn't know Eliza, she's the mother of a brand new baby. So, and I'm sure you're, I mean, he's already going to be on the right path with a mom like you, so driven by, uh, you know, passion and purpose. Um, so now, um, how has, you know, you make a lot of difference to people's life with the work you do, right? Um, how has this shaped you as a person? Well, uh, when I see a child uh, saying, you know, their mother's name or their father's name for the first time, or I see an individual swallow for the first time after being on a feeding tube, I get the happiness more than them, I feel. You know, that fuels my soul. So I have become so, uh, I don't know, in the sense, uh, I want to feel that sensation more and more. That's probably made me a little more patient for starters. I have become super patient with people because I'm craving to feel that filled soul of mine. So it has definitely shaped my personality. I've been empathetic. My field has made me feel so much for the other person's suffering. And because God probably has blessed me with decent skills to treat, so I'm just trying my best and being my best to do that. You're just being very modest, but that's okay. You know, for people who don't understand what you do, like speech language pathology or swallow therapy, uh, can you uh, educate us a little bit more on how this makes a difference to people's lives? Because not everybody knows this field. True, true. Very true. So our field per se has not picked up a lot of uh, popularity, especially in our country. However, abroad, this is something that is regular in general schools, normal schools, you always will have a speech therapist who works with pediatric population. So you have speech therapists who work with only adult, you have speech therapists who work with only geriatric as in people who are above 60 years of age. So we do our bachelor's which is for four years and then we specialize whether you want to go into speech language pathology or you want to be an audiologist. That is someone who deals with the hearing and balance disorders. So I specialized in speech language pathology and swallowing. So that is another two years. So a total of six to seven years is full of a lot of knowledge that helps you make who you are as a profession. Mm -hmm. So we treat a range of disorders. Mind you, it is nothing to do with saving lives, but I would put it, we make lives worth living. So, you know, that's, we improve the quality of living. And that's very important. Yes, yes. I mean, what's the point of living if you're not, you know, thriving? Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, see, all of us go to go through different ordeals in life. Like, so when uh, the way uh, I met Elisa is uh, when one of our friends, Saurish, um, had a stroke few months ago. And uh, one of the things he was told that he would need swallow therapy when he went home. And to be honest, I had never heard of this. And I said, what is swallow therapy? And that's when, uh, you know, Eliza was recommended to us and she completely transformed his life. I mean, you're talking about quality of life. Imagine if you cannot swallow, what are you going to eat? So, um, Eliza, do share your story with Saurish. And I I love the way you connected, not just with Saurish, but also with his wife and the way you did holistic care for them. You know, it was just amazing. You could make out when Saurish was having a bad day, a good day, when he needed more, less. So if you can share his story and any other stories that come to your mind, which could be inspirational for our listeners. So uh, more uh, medically speaking, the person in uh, discussion had a brainstem stroke. So that is in the middle of your brain. He suffered a stroke. He is, he was, he's a young patient. So I knew that we can look at a complete recovery, scientifically speaking. But of course, there are variables. Uh, Saurish per se comes across as a very vibrant, a hardworking and uh, somebody who is ready to do whatever you want. So he also made me work a little harder. I cannot deny that. Because he wanted to become better as soon as possible. So we, of course, I mean, I was asked, how long will I take? So it was a point of time in my life that, you know, I was closing to my delivery. But then I took it up as a challenge that I am going to definitely make him eat something before I deliver. So that is my goal there. So because of the stroke, he was put on a tube which goes through your nose all the way till your esophagus is in uh, food pipe. So we did a lot of therapy, daily therapy sessions. One therapy session is almost an hour's worth. It was definitely tele-based. So uh, people don't have to think that teletherapy doesn't work. 
every day for 20 days is what we took the treatment as and uh, before you know it in 20 days he was off his tube all his doctors were surprised that you know he's able to he's actually started eating but then we had to definitely systematically go you can't just you know one day start biryani all together but Which yes. he would have loved by the way I mean, that was his goal when he started this whole thing. I told him that you'll get fish if you do well. So you always have to give them the reinforcement. It motivates them. So a step-by-step, uh, you know, process really helped. So yes, and of course, there's a lot of mental uh, trauma that an individual has because you have lost the skills that you did not have. You know, you were so good at before something as natural as swallowing. Most of us don't really think about it before swallowing. So if you lost that, it will give you a lot of mental stress. So, as part of being a speech language pathologist and you know dysphagia specialist, I personally feel that the need to have a holistic approach is mandatory. You cannot look at the condition as a condition. You have to look at the person as a you know individual. So, if you improve the condition, you decrease the severity. You also improve the person's outlook in life. So that was my journey with Saurish, and he's doing well. He's starting. He started his comeback with big bangs. So I'm very yes. happy for him. Absolutely, and you've become a part of I think his uh, now family. It's you know for you for us uh, we can always you know call uh, Elisa for anything, and she's always there. And I think that's what I we loved about you the way you just didn't start therapy. It was not about how many sessions, and uh, you know you connected with each of us. You understood who he is, where he comes from. And I'm sure you do that with all patients, um, Eliza. Yes, I do try my best. So for another example, there was another patient who was a little older, of course. And then he had a cerebellum stroke. That's a structure in the brain that uh, is responsible for your balance and a lot of language uh, functions as well. So I started seeing him one week post-stroke. So a lot of you know medical professionals feel that okay let the person's medical condition stabilize then mm-hmm. you call in allied professionals but you know that's a misconception we can see patients right in the ICU as well so he also had a, a you know a swallowing tube and then for him the journey was six months so yes there is variable there are treatments for the same situation but then people improve in their own timeline another example is that of stammering. That is something that a lot of people think, you know, will go by on its own or it's something very transient. Or I have had patients who've come to me only, you know, when the child has, child or adult has reached an interview, job interview stage, wherein, you know, I'm not able to face 10 people at the same time. Can you fix my speech? So there is something that no matter how much I try or the world's best speech therapist tries, they will not be able to help you. It's a step by step process. So you need to be able to, you know, give it that time, early identification, early treatment, all these things will help. I I think stammering is, I have seen so many people as adults, they go for therapy, like you said, or when they're getting married, like, you know, they're starting to look for boys and girls and say, ah, now my child has stammering, what do I do? So oh, fix my speech, fix my speech. Yeah, fix the speech. So we, we can get a better boy or a better girl. That happens, I think, in India a lot. So uh, for parents or for people listening out there who have issues, I think you all should reach out to Eliza because better to solve the issue when it is not such a challenge and you can do it easily. So, so Eliza, it's obvious that you are very good at what you do. You love what you do and do what you love. And I think that's why... Um, I think that's your driver and I see the way you connect with people. It's at such a deeper level for you. It's not just about a client, about a patient. Let me do my job and get out, right? It's it's at a very deep level. Uh, but still tell me, what is that something that is different that you do from uh, probably other people in your profession? Um, I don't want to put anybody in a different <laughs> light, but just generally, you know, what is that? What is your USP, your X factor that make people come to you and that you are successful in what you do? Uh, I don't know if this is something that is general or uh, maybe it is that people don't choose their field as first choice. But most of my colleagues or you know my contemporaries, they've all chosen this field without actually knowing what the field is about. It always came as plan B for something. So I think some everybody will always plan uh, prefer plan A than plan B. 
for me this was my first choice i knew exactly what i was getting into i knew what i wanted to do i knew what i wanted to specialize in because i've seen my grandfather suffer from the similar condition called aphasia which affects you know the language and speaking so i made it my point that you know i will treat everybody so i think that that emotional aspect that i knew from the beginning that this is my goal in life this is what's going to fulfill me that drives me every day that you know i don't want to be somebody that uh, has chosen plan b and i don't want to be somebody's plan b either so i'll be that good so that people choose you <laughs> so eliza's plan a has always been this and i i read that your grandfather has been the inspiration for you behind this i think like you said many people maybe choose it because they don't get their first choice of uh, a degree or whatever and they say okay this is available so let me take it i'm hoping all those people who took it become as passionate as you i oh, hope so too i really hope so it's a beautiful field if you're interested that is yes i read the pain So are you doing anything uh, to inspire young people to uh, you know fall in line with your uh, field I know your staff is very young and they're all uh, young people so you you've done, they're also probably passionate like you right Of course yes I have uh, so since we're only 1 year old and uh, number is just a number but i have very passionate three people working for me they we work as a team i don't say we they're working for me they're working for the society they're working for the patients and uh, they're equally passionate all three of them they work very hard they have their own individual characteristics that stand out which attracted me towards you know including them into my team plus another thing that we do is staff enrichment programs which we have like once in two weeks so we share what we you know so in a patient what we found difficult or what we found successful so that we share the thing so before all this started i was also a lecturer and a clinical supervisor in my alma mater oh for a brief God. period okay and uh, contrary to what people would think yeah i was the youngest uh, lecturer there then uh, i my research got accepted in the central government uh, institute so i had to go I, to, i had to leave the job and then go towards research explore that aspect of mine then realized i think research can wait a little bit there are a lot of researchers but i think i need to help the people first so i came back and you know started my own thing so, so even yeah. oh, sorry go ahead so yeah that that part of me teaching the budding speech language pathologists and audiologists they'd still call me even after 3 years and tell me that you know you've been the best supervisor that we've ever had and we would one day would want to be with you work with you so that's what the passion that i hope that they are also able to instill in the people who they teach yeah, wonderful that's why i said you're on your way to greatness bigger greatness than you're already um, you know experiencing in your life and i would love to do this interview again with you probably 10 years from now and you can tell me all the ways you've changed so many lives oh. but but if you had to see like um, a few changes in your profession what would they be that would revolutionize uh, speech uh, pathology and swallow therapy well starting would definitely be a virus like you just like you mentioned you got to know about me only because someone close to you needed the services but as opposed to somebody who everybody knows who is an oncologist or who a physiotherapist mm-hmm. is right but we are also important but then i would blame my field itself for not spreading enough awareness so that's one thing that i urge my people also to focus on spread awareness among local people of course the doctors know about us the medical staff knows about us but then we cannot depend on them to dispose the information to the public so first hand information i think that's one thing that we need to change another thing is um, people just expect any health professional to do miracles ah oh, that's true <laughs> yes we don't deal with medicines at all so that's something you know my profession doesn't deal with medication we deal with more of behavioral and uh, treatment using motor skills and practice so whatever comes out in treatment is from here nothing is coming out from medicines right so we cannot put a timeline as to you know i'll fix your child in 6 months it's mm-hmm. not happening i want the parents involvement for 6 months and then i can comment maybe in another 2 months we can do it hmm i see your child for 1 hour in a day rest of the time the child is with you what are you doing i can only guide you 
yes so that's another thing now the one more thing that i would definitely want to highlight here is you know people's um, attitude towards uh, speech therapy as uh, something unnecessary or this these things will resolve on its own like now swallowing for that matter maybe the body will heal and it will become fine hmm. after stroke no all the motor skills are becoming better he is able to walk so maybe he will start speaking also so don't and or a child not speaking for after one year of age a child should be speaking first word at one first birthday if he doesn't say it that means there's a delay no yeah. no his father spoke late only by 6 years ah, so that's the usual thing i've heard that yeah <laughs> yes so don't wait you go get yourself assessed or go get your child assessed if there is no problem well and good but if there is a problem that means you caught it in time so these are probably you know just like how you said it's a top, tip of the iceberg there are a lot of things that need to be addressed but yeah these are the ones which i would definitely want the public to know so i uh, so i'm helping you by probably creating more awareness i hope a lot of oh. people watch and understand a different line a different profession especially youngsters who are looking at doing something very unique i think today's uh, world uh, the younger generation is looking for something which is you know different always and i think this is very different it's also like a service you know you're just uh, elevating a person's life and i think the work you do is also like a partnership from what i hear it's not just about you going and saying do this do this and they don't do it then it doesn't work so they have you have to work together to bring about the result and like you said there is no magic pill that you take and say okay uh, i'm okay now you have to practice you have to work i know uh, saurish worked very hard to do everything that he did and so did his wife so um really i mean you know thank you so much for making such a difference to people's life Now I wanted to ask you you are very passionate you have a purpose in life but what is your message Elisa for those people who are struggling maybe to find what is their passion I recently did a survey on LinkedIn and 50% of the people said uh, you know they're not living a life of passion they you know their passion is something else their career is something else and they're just stuck any message from the young Elisa for all these people uh I think I'm uh me getting into this field was sheer luck okay those people who don't believe in luck it is legit true i have you know been academically decent all my life so obviously when you when you're okay people expect you to go for those you know running jobs that you know become a doctor become an engineer but then i wanted to be a little hatke if you say Okay I want I tried fields you know I tried uh, my hand on law mass media english psychology but then when I actually explored this that's when I said okay something clicks correct with me so I would t- encourage people to explore more don't just follow like a sheep you know like the herd mm. everybody is going to do something that does not mean it's right for you you are probably you are more you are different because god made you different and no job is lower than the other that complexity is something we have to throw out of our brain we have to make our elders also understand that it is not and you know the financial aspect is always definitely true but like how you know you saw that people who follow their passion at some point of time will also gain financial stability absolutely because the success is going to come to you my only message is explore more don't have this preset conception in your mind that this is what i should do because my parents told me to do this because my neighbor's child is doing this and because this has a lot of money no explore find out what your heart is calling you for that's oh, so beautiful i think it was einstein who said right everybody is a genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it live its whole life believing that it is stupid and that's happening to a lot of us because you know we, i mean uh, especially in my generation you know we just listen to our parents and uh, we, they said commerce commerce engineering engineering and we never thought like what are we good at and i think it's what you're saying is you have to really understand yourself know your strengths your weaknesses and uh, and if you're a fish and you enter a competition to climb a tree there is no way you can win guys right? you know and so that, that's why it's important to do the introspection when you're younger i think as parents we should allow our children also to explore and it's and it's we should accept that if it if you fail it's okay 
it's okay yes yeah. it's okay and there's no timeline yeah to succeed maybe after you know after you do one college probably after 6 years of mbbs if you realize that you would have done better in journalism i would totally support that person that you know why be a crappy doctor when you can be the world's yeah. best reporter in the world right so i mean yes that's what there's no timeline self introspection is important know your strengths and weaknesses improve your strengths and you know probably also work on your weaknesses yeah all the weaknesses just diminish sometimes when you work so much on your strengths so yeah. it becomes ignis- insignificant i'm just uh, waiting to see what kind of a mother you're going to be and what ian is going to do when he grows up uh, i'm hope i'm alive to see that but yeah i really would love to see that having a mother like you um very inspiring so thank you so much for being with us today and if you have any last words uh, from your side to the viewers watching today please now is your opportunity say say it well i mean we discussed a lot about my field we've discussed a lot about me my team so another thing which i would like to tell everybody is whoever is seeking services that is remotely associated with our field during this pandemic time do not have a preconceived notion that you need to meet me in person oh that's true a virtual a virtual connect can do wonders it's evidence based practice teletherapy is evidence based practice and it's a process it's not just a treatment so you know a process can happen even if you're sitting right in front of me or i'm watching you through a screen yeah so we can help you regardless of the mode so that's something that do not hesitate on and another thing you know to those people who are really pursuing or trying to find their passion like i said don't hold back just let it flow that's all and then things will just fall into its own place i'm happy because things naturally just flow and you know if you're passionate about it it will happen just believe in it and things are going to be perfect yeah i i think uh, um when you believe in something like you said all the doors will open up the universe will respond so guys don't give up on your passion keep following it whatever it is whether it is painting it is engineering you want to be a doctor you want to be a chef just keep following your dreams align with it as much as possible you will just you know experience this magic where people you never dreamt of will come into your life and help you get to the next level i mean i truly believe that right i came into my life <laughs> <laughs> and elisa looks very sweet but you know she is a um, taskmaster so she is going to make sure whether you are in front of her or you are online with her you're going to get your therapy done and you she is going to get the results for you and i believe in that after i met you i have spoken to a lot of people who you have helped and they swear by you elisa and for me that's a huge testament that's all you need when you're when the people you have helped uh you know give testimony like that what else do you need right i trust you completely so if anybody there wants to reach out to elisa will put up her uh, website and her phone number please call her get the help that you need and move forward in life and improve the quality of your life yes. and then follow your passion yes follow your passion and your soul will be full of purpose then <laughs> yes absolutely so if you resolve all your issues then you can focus on p and p So again thank you so much Elisa it's been an exciting half an hour with you thank you so much thanks for having me Kavita it's, it's been amazing thank you so guys thank you and i hope you guys enjoyed this interview as much as i did my goal is to bring to you people from different walks of life who are following their passion and purpose who are loving what they do and doing what they love and i look forward to meeting you in the next episode i hope you are too and do follow me on youtube kavita garla and you will be getting inspired to follow your passion bye